His Holiness Swami Nirmalan Nirmalanand Nath ji my friend from World Bank Vice President Shri Junaid Kamal Ahmed ji Mr John Chambers our very respected and always a leading light Shri Ram Madhav ji honorable MPs Mr Sinha Mr Das Gupta dada uh, many dignitaries present here I wish you all a great conference on this excellent idea, a very futuristic idea. So let me begin with uh, the omnipresent, omnipotent across five cities, omniscient law. Whether Moore's law will work or not, Murphy's law will always work. <laughs> Technology will always fail us when we need it the most. So we'll have uh, many dignitaries who are more qualified than me to speak about technology and the way it's going to change the world, the way it's going to affect our society. I'll probably in a very brief uh, presentation cover only three points. The first point is about what should we do as a country, as a society, in the government, outside the government, in the industry, in the civil society, to mold ourselves and be ready for the change which is happening. That's the first point. Second, is, second point is about digital inclusion, which is very close to our government's philosophy. And third is about how do we balance accountability and the freedom and the options and choices which technology brings. These are the three very brief points I'll present before you. All of you are far, far better qualified than me to understand technology. And this is the city where, uh, as we say in Ayodhya, kan kan mein Ram hai, here kan kan mein chip hai. So <laughs> this is the city of technology. So people like me should be very careful when we speak. So the first one, so what should we do as society, as government, as industry? To my mind, it uh, boils down to a few strategic technologies that we must master. As a country, as academia, as industry, as government, absolutely without any barriers between all these sections of the society, we must master a few technologies if we want to be ready for the world which is in front of us. It's not future, it's today. And when the robots were presenting, I was thinking that why would we need human beings? If tomorrow the entire conference would be done by the robots, then... <laughs> so in this kind of world, which is a very different world from what we saw in the yesteryears, we must master at least seven or eight technologies. First and foremost is the whole telecom piece. The telecom technology stack is going to be the fundamental driving force, one of the fundamental driving forces of the way the world is changing. So the steps that we have taken from the government side is, in the country, we should develop our own 4G technology stack, complete end-to-end, -end, 5G technology stack, end-to-end -end, and be prepared to take the leadership in the world, in the IPR, in products, in solutions, in applications for the entire 6G journey. So, and uh, this is something which flows straight out of Prime Minister Modiji's vision. He gave us a clear target that when BSNL wants to go from 2G, 3G to 4G, it cannot be a 4G which comes, which is imported from some other place. It has to be a 4G which is developed in the country by our engineers, by our scientists, and that's the 4G we have to use first in India and then use it all over the world to conquer the world. And that 4G then goes, becomes the base for 5G development. So very happy to say the way the entire team has worked in a very seamless, very collaborative manner 
the entire 4G technology stack from the core to radio to the components to the equipment to the handset, entire thing is now readily available for deployment. And the 5G technology stack, lab level structure, lab level technology stack is ready end to end. It's getting integrated in, into the uh, field level deployment stage. By the end of this year, we would have our own 5G technology stack ready from end to end once again. And best thing is the world as we know doesn't recognize until and unless you have proven yourself. So for the first time in the history of telecom uh, development journey, India's IPR has been accepted as a mandatory standard in the 3GPP, the standard setting body of telecom standards. It has been accepted as the, so basically the, 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 the IPR which went into the standards is the IPR which modulates the waveform so that it can actually reach out, the signals can reach out to a much larger, larger geography using the same power and the, using the same system. And why it's important? Because country like India, which is far widespread, where the potential, the paying potential of uh, people is lower compared to many other uh, higher income countries, we need systems which can take us further with lesser investment. So that standard, that IP right has been accepted and included in the global international standards. And that should be just the beginning. I would say that should just be a humble beginning. We feel proud about it, but we should make much more effort now to make sure that all the innovative brains, innovative minds, which are working on this technology, they get an opportunity to include these, these developments in the global standards. Because once the, once the global standards have our inputs, then the recognition for our talent increases, the spread of our technology increases, the acceptance of our thought process increases. So that's the first. And the second piece that we really need to do very well is the whole semiconductor piece because everything is driven by that. Everything is kind of, I mean, I don't have to say how important it is. And since we have a talent pool of about 50,000 odd design engineers who are designing for pretty much every big company in the world, why can't we have our own IPR? Why can't we have our own design powerhouses? Why can't we have our own chipsets which are useful for our applications, which provide that trust and security which the world is today yearning for and do all this at a cost point which is definitely much lower compared to many other geographies. So that's why in uh, last December, uh, Prime Minister approved a complete comprehensive semiconductor program. We launched the program in January and the response so far has been excellent. I cannot say fabulous because it's not fabulous, it's going to be with fab. So uh, that's the kind of pretty much every big semiconductor company wants to today be a part of India's journey. Whether it is design, whether it is setting up fab, whether it is doing the compound semiconductors, whether it is doing the absolutely advanced packaging, being part of the talent pool. And good thing is we have committed for good 20 years. We haven't made it a four year or a five year or a one off scheme. We have very transparently, openly, very sincerely committed ourselves to a journey of 20 years. And we are the only country when the whole world is throwing wads of dollars at the semiconductor industry, 
we are the only country which has committed that we will focus on developing 85,000 semiconductor talent pool over the next 10 years. And the announcements happened in January, very rapidly in February and March itself. We tied up with some of the best of the best institutions, all the IITs, the NITs. We tied up with the global institutions in Singapore and Taiwan, in Europe, in US, and today, the course curriculum is getting module, getting changed by AICT, and not just the PhDs and MTechs and BTechs, but also the people at the shop floor level. The complete value chain right from the shop floor to the PhD level, that entire ecosystem of talent we have focused, so that gives the confidence to us that we in India would be prepared for India 2.0 rebooting to meta era, that kind of time frame, that kind of world that we see in front of us. The third point, the third thing which we really need to master is, see the way meta era is going to play out will be dependent upon connectivity, which comes from the telecom sector, compute power which comes from the chips and the chipsets and the design. And third will be a lots and lots of whole spectrum of devices. So we need to master the design and manufacturing ecosystem of devices also. And that's something where the journey of last five years gives us tremendous confidence that yes, we have achieved, a, achieved the a significant level where we are today considered as one of the major electronics manufacturing country at uh, close to 80 billion US dollars and almost growing uh, 20 plus EAGR basis and like very reasonably, uh, very reasonably likely to reach 300 billion US in the next five uh, years. And the entire ecosystem manufacturer, manufacturing ecosystem is not only developing horizontally, but also developing vertically in terms of the component ecosystem also is coming to the country. So with that kind of development, we do feel confident that this is the third point on which we as a country, we as a society, we as industry and academia, we would be prepared for the journey ahead. I'll come to the second point, which is very close to our government's heart, that is about digital inclusion. Till, let's say, the previous uh, 30, 40 years, the technology cycles were pretty much like 10 years, 15 years, 20 years kind of technology cycles. They shrank and became technology cycles of five years, seven years. Now technology cycles are sometimes in quarters. I had a boss some, at one point of time, so he was a very tough boss, like most bosses. So he used to, I would say, I, I won't take the name. Well, boss, I did so well in the last quarter. Come on, last quarter was history. So that's world. <laughs> that's the way many people think, and that's the, way, that's the world in which we are living. So today, quarter by quarter, things are changing so much that technology cycles have become so small that by the time we catch up, things have changed. So in this kind of world, how, how do we make sure that the people at the bottom of the pyramid, people at the last point in the society, the marginalized sections, the sections, the people who are still not getting the benefits of the technology, the society, the advancements that we sitting in Bangalore are able to get. How do we make sure that we reach out to them? How do we make sure that they also get a fair chance of competing in this world? How do we make sure that every child gets the benefits of this technology, this world, which all of us are getting benefits sitting in, uh, living in large cities? And that's where our government's focus on Antyodaya, 
Antyodaya, in the Western world, we would call it inclusive development. In our philosophy, we call it the development of the persons at the last point in the society, far flung, the marginalized, these sections which are still not touched by development. So our focus on bringing of signals, again, without using fibers. So those technologies can help us reach out faster to the people at the bottom of the pyramid, to the societies, un, uh, I mean, the marginalized sections of the society. So that will be very, very important because economic difference can still be bridged. Digital divide, if we don't bridge now, then it will be too late. Because every passing day, every passing day, every passing hour, that divide gets widened, further widened. So that's the second point I'll present before you. And the third point is about the whole regulatory ecosystem. Just before uh, coming to this conference, we had a demonstration in which a person sitting at a distant place is able to practically be part of the, uh, almost like sitting across the table. And I've seen other demonstrations from um, global companies where the technology is today so pervasive, it can be so useful also, of course it's useful most of the times, the kind of applications, kind of use cases it can generate are huge, but simultaneously it brings a great sense of uh, uncertainty also in one's mind. So how do we balance the opportunities which are created by technology and the sense of accountability which is needed with the all pervasive technology that we have today. As Swamiji very rightly said, if we are able to at least understand ourselves, if we are able to connect with from human to human, we are able to connect at the uh, spiritual level, at the human level, then the things would be very different. But in today's world, that is becoming ever more difficult. So we'll have to create a regulatory structure where the accountability of people who are developing technology, people who are using technology, that also comes with the freedom of using technology. So both the things will have to go hand in hand. Then only we'll have a balanced society, else we have the danger of getting into a territory which is really unknown territory where the consequences are still not known. So these are the three brief points I'll present before you. And I really congratulate India Foundation for the great work that the foundation has been doing, always at the cutting edge, like in 5G we say edge computing. So always at the edge computing, edge of the uh, thought process, thinking, ideas, ideation. So congratulations to uh, all the participants and look forward to all the recommendations which come from this, uh, from this conference. Thank you very much.